In today's video, we're going to be continuing the Dividend Madness series, where I started with 64 dividend aristocrats, ranked them top to bottom by highest market cap to lowest market cap. That's how the seeding was determined. I've been matching them up and then determining the winner based on different criteria. So in the first uh, round of 64, we did return on invested capital and other metrics that determined whether a business had a competitive advantage or not. Uh, we also looked at earnings consistency, things like that. In the second round, we looked more specifically at valuation metrics, which was based on the suggestion from someone from a previous video. In today's video, we're going to look at specifically some dividend metrics, including dividend payout ratio, historical dividend growth relative to price, and then the trend of the current dividend growth relative to last year. Which of the 16 dividend aristocrats are going to make it to the Elite Eight? In this video, we're going to talk about it. This video is for educational purposes only. It should not be considered investment, legal, or tax advice. It is not an offer to buy or sell any security. Past performance does not indicate future results. Investing is risky. Today's video is sponsored by Magic Mind. Magic Mind is something that I have taken uh, in my life and has really helped me to have more of a uh, calm focus instead of something like coffee, uh, which has tended to, to get me a bit jittery. And you know, you tend to have the, the big ups in energy and then the big crashes later on. Magic Mind is different than that. It combines 13 different ingredients that are based on decades of scientific research. And the specific design of this shot is to help you be more focused, more productive, which as we all know, if you're more focused, more productive, you're gonna make better decisions, including better investment decisions. If you're interested in Magic Mind, use the link in the description below to get a special discount code for subscribers of the channel. And now back to the video. So here's where the bracket currently stands. You can see the 64 matchups that we had. You can see we started off with these 64, so 32 different matchups, the winner of each one of those matchups, and then the winner of each one of those. So this is where we're currently at today. We're gonna start off, our very first matchup is Sherwin-Williams versus Caterpillar. So quickly running through the metrics that we're gonna be looking at here. Uh, we've got in this particular chart, the blue line is price. The red line is the dividends paid over the last year. The next chart, we have dividend change over the last 12 months. So for Sherwin-Williams, for example, they've increased their dividend by 8.36% over the last year. And then we also have a dividend payout ratio, which simply takes the amount of dividends paid over the last year divided by the net income, uh, which is what's used to calculate earnings per share. And then we have the same thing on the right for Caterpillar. So this first chart, what I'm mostly looking for is a consistent relationship between the price and the dividend per share. Over time, a rising dividend, rising earnings, rising cash flow will generally lead to a rising stock price. That's most of the logic behind investing in dividend growth stocks is that they are very likely to continue to increase the dividend uh, many years in the future, which will naturally put upward pressure on the stock price. So in both cases, we see a generally positive trajectory between the dividends and the prices. Both of these charts uh, look fine. Now let's take a look at dividend growth. What we're really looking for here is any uh, significant uh, changes. We're looking for situations where the dividend growth maybe used to be 10, 15%. Now it's you know close to zero, things like that. Um, in these cases, you know, both of these charts uh, look all right. You do have a couple periods where dividend growth was almost zero. Uh, they did technically increase it, but not by much. Uh, the last 12 months, Sherwin-Williams gets the slight nod uh, for better dividend growth. Uh, the charts don't look, you know, that uh, shocking. There is a bit of a concern here with Caterpillar. I don't love to see these massive swings. So you've got you know, dividend growth fell to almost zero, and then the next year it went to over 50%. Ideally, you'd like to see a little bit more consistency. Sherwin-Williams has kind of been a little bit more consistent, I would say, um, you know, more around the, the 10 to 20% mark. So we'll give the nod to Sherwin-Williams. Dividend payout ratio, same, same thing. Uh, the lower, the better. So the less 
uh, they're paying out means the more sustainable that dividend is going to be and the more they're going to have uh, the ability to grow that in the future. So 31% better than 36%. Uh, one other thing to note on Caterpillar, again, you see this huge uh, spike. Uh, so you got the payout ratio completely collapsed, uh, which probably means that uh, earnings were negative. It's actually, we're in the negative territory. And then the next year, uh, the dividend payout ratio was you know close to 100%. You don't like to see that. It looks like a heartbeat monitor. But anyways, the more consistent payout ratio for Sherwin-Williams and lower. So Sherwin-Williams will take this round and move on to the Elite Eight, and they'll face the winner of Nextera and Chevron. So right off the bat, I like Nextera's look a little better here. You can see the dividends per share very consistently moving up. Same with price. Whereas Chevron, you have this period where dividends technically were growing, but they were growing very slowly. Uh, the price is also a lot more uh, volatile. So I'm going to give the nod to Nextera on this chart. Dividend growth, you can see, has also been much more consistent for Nextera. Looks like the high has been around, uh, what is this, about 14%, and the low has been about 3%. Whereas if you look over here at Chevron, it did... Basically, it looks like it reached a 0% growth rate. Uh, I think that's maybe, maybe they increased it 0.001%. If they're a dividend aristocrat, they had to have increased it at least a little bit. Uh, but but and then you've got the high at, you know, about the same 14%. Uh, but most recently, next year is dividend growth, 10.4%, uh, better than uh, Chevron's 7%, plus a lot less volatile, more consistent. So next era takes that one. Dividend payout ratio has been uh, a little bit inconsistent, really, for both of these businesses. You have this huge spike for Nextera up to a payout ratio of 360%. I would assume this is probably because of earnings decline. They probably had a one-time write-off or something that caused that to spike. Uh, same thing with Chevron. You had a huge spike in dividend payout ratio uh, here. And then you had a huge collapse into negative territory here and then a negative here. Um, so anyways, I think Nextera with a clean sweep and they will move on to the Elite Eight to face Sherwin-Williams. The next battle is between a stock that I admitted last time I did not expect to make it to the Sweet 16. Uh, they come up against a dividend juggernaut ADP. So starting off here, we have the price and the dividends per share. And what you see right off the bat is that 3M's uh, stock price has been absolutely collapsing for the last uh, really couple of years. You know, there is generally a relationship over time, uh, but you certainly don't like to see that. Whereas ADP, you have this consistent increase in dividends each and every year. The stock price has actually not quite kept pace with that, but you do have a very consistent increase in price as the dividend has grown. So ADP uh, takes the win there. Uh, this next chart is really where the story um, gets pretty clear what's happening. So 3M's trailing 12-month dividend is 68, not percent. 0.68%. So they are just increasing the dividend in order to keep their streak alive. Um, I don't know how long this is going to be able to be maintained, uh, but very clearly over the last couple years, they, their dividend growth has been significantly lower. I remember having a conversation with one of the subscribers from the channel about 3M several years ago, and you know he was commenting, hey, look, you know, 3M's increasing their dividend at you know 15% you know, 20 plus percent. And the reality is all they were doing is increasing their dividend payout ratio. And you can see that very clearly with this chart. So 3M used to pay point, I think about 35% of their earnings as dividends. That consistently increased uh, up to the point where now they're paying out, you know, 60% of their earnings. And that seems to be rising uh, over time as their earnings have continued to stagnate. So this big increase in dividend growth was mostly because they were increasing the payout ratio, not because they were increasing their underlying fundamentals. So that's why you do need to pay attention to more than just dividends when assessing a dividend paying stock. Dividends ultimately come from earnings and without earnings and without sales uh, growing, you are not going to be able to sustain 
dividend growth. And that's exactly what you see with 3M. They also have some legal problems. You can all tell I do not like 3M in the slightest. But anyways, back to ADP. Dividend growth rate's been 14.1, never been really below, what is that, 4%. Uh, so much more consistent, much higher growth rate, easy win here. Not only that, but the payout ratio is 55% for ADP, whereas it's 59% for 3M. Uh, so a massive domination here by ADP over 3M, and they will emphatically move on to the Elite Eight. Next matchup, we have CNI, Canadian National versus APD. And here, here we have probably the most beautiful Price dividend chart, maybe I've ever seen. Just look at this from CNI. Dividends paid versus price is looks like the same chart almost. I mean, that is just absolutely beautiful on both metrics. The dividend and the price moving almost completely in tandem. Uh, so that alone is going to get it the win. APD, on the other hand, uh, very nice, consistent look from dividends. This, this looks really good as well. Uh, price has actually outpaced it. A little bit, but you have to give the nod. Just look at that. I mean, that is amazing. Just exactly what we want as dividend investors. Uh, the next chart, another win for CNI, 12.8% dividend growth, very consistent over time. Compared with Air Products, a lower dividend growth rate at eight, and also a lot more inconsistent, huge spikes, uh, both down and up. And for the clean sweep, dividend payout ratio at 38%. Uh, versus 62%, another easy win for CNI. They will move on to the Elite Eight to face ADP. And I think this matchup is really, it's unfortunate. I wish this would occur, you know, maybe more in the championship game or the final four, as these two companies are both absolute juggernauts. It's a shame that one of them will have to lose next week. Uh, but I'll be interested to see which one comes out on top. Next matchup, we have FactSet versus SP Global. These are two uh, financial services companies. And uh, first thing you notice, S&P Global, I think they paid a huge special dividend. Uh, so we won't penalize them necessarily for that spike. You know, really, really both charts, I'm just going to say this is a tie. Both charts look great. Consistent dividend growth over time. The stock prices have generally, you know, gone along with it. Got a little more spiky here for SP Global on the price. Uh, but really very similar looking trajectories. Uh, so we'll call that a tie. The dividend growth rate, um, you have 8.5% versus 7.8. So a slight uh, edge to FactSet. You also have, I think, a little bit better uh, trajectory for FactSet, whereas S&P Global, you can see that they were a couple years ago, you know, close to 20%, and that is kind of steadily headed lower. Uh, so that's not something you love to see. And then the exact same payout ratio at 29%. Uh, the thing you like about FactSet, uh, probably breaks the tie here, is that you don't have this huge decline then increase. Again, I think this is the special, but this is a bit concerning. Looks like they fell into negative territory on earnings. So let's give the victory here to FactSet. This was a close one, but they will move on to face the winner of Lowe's and Pepsi. So Lowe's, Pepsi, again, you see very, very beautiful uh, price charts here. You've got clearly price and dividends moving together in a very similar way. However, Pepsi maybe rivals CNI as the one of the best looking dividend price charts. Uh, this is absolutely sensational. They'll get the win here. Dividend growth rate uh, is, is kind of interesting. You have a huge increase. I mean, you have to give it to Lowe's. 32% trailing 12-month dividend increase. Just sensational. Uh, however, you do have a pretty steady dividend growth for Pepsi at around 7%, but the nod has to go to Lowe's. And the dividend payout ratio is definitely Lowe's at 37% compared with 77% for Pepsi. So Lowe's gets the win there and they will move on to the next round to face Faxit. Tough to see Pepsi go down here. Great company, but Lowe's um, just a little bit better. Next, we have an interesting matchup between Procter & Gamble and T. Rowe Price. Just from the price and dividend chart, you have to go with PG. Very consistent relationship. 
you know, not tremendous dividend growth, but consistent, same with price, consistent dividend growth, consistent price growth. That's kind of what we're going for here versus T row. You know, you have, I think some special dividends that they've been paying, but kind of inconsistent, especially the price chart, just a huge run up and a huge run down, uh, which you don't love. However, on dividend growth, you have to give the nod to T row at 11.1, generally pretty consistent versus PG at 5.4. So that one goes to T row. And the final tiebreaker is between payout ratios. And here you give the nod to Procter and Gamble at 62% versus T row at 76. So PG takes this round. And then the final matchup, we have Dover versus McDonald's. So on dividends and price charts, again, you have to give the nod to McDonald's. Just look at that. Very consistent, very strong correlation between dividends and prices. That looks sensational. On dividend growth, we have 8% versus 1%. That is not a good look for Dover or McDonald's. Just look how consistent that's been around 8%. Uh, really amazing. So McDonald's gets the win there. Payout ratio uh, goes to Dover at just 27% versus 67% for McDonald's. And what's interesting, and, and there's probably more to the story here for Dover, why would the dividend growth rate be 1% when the payout ratio is only 27 You know, They should have plenty of room to be able to increase that. So my thought is maybe they're investing in some projects. You know, Maybe they're doing more of a buyback focus. You know, I don't know what, what's happening here, but uh, seems like they have a clear ability to increase the dividend. They're just not for uh, whatever reason. So it'll be interesting to check that out more. But for this simple analysis, McDonald's will move on. So here are the matchups for the Elite Eight. You know, just looking at these names, I think all of them really would be uh, excellent candidates to to win this tournament. So I'm happy with where we've sort of landed here on the Elite Eight. I think this is a fantastic little list of stocks. The Sweet 16, I think you had a few a few weaklings that we ended up um, taking out, specifically 3M, I think, uh, was not deserving of uh, the Sweet 16. Uh, yes, I'm being hard on 3M. Uh, you could roast me in the comments if you love it. But anyways, um, I think these eight are great candidates. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to determine the Elite Eight, who's going to advance to the Final Four. I do know that I eventually want to get more detailed as we have you know, fewer games. We'll be able to look at more metrics. So maybe next week I could bring in you know, all three of the components we've looked at and kind of uh, you know, put them all together and look through that. The other thing we could do is something with uh, you know, technicals. We haven't looked at price charts or anything like that. Uh, that's another option that we could do. Maybe there's some other ideas you guys have. So let me know in the comment section down below if you have any ideas for how we could determine which stocks make it to the final four. Um, so let me know. I'd be glad to hear from you. Also, for those of you who are supporting me on Patreon and as a YouTube member, Reminder, both of those are the exact same thing. Uh, I am getting ready to post the Q&A video for uh, this month, so look for that. I'm also going to post an S&P 500 valuation model. If you're interested in that, I'll put a link in the description down below. Thanks, everyone, for watching, and I will see you in the next video.